Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for making time for this. I have lots of questions about the new album and about hardcore, lots of things. But first of all, you dissed me in one of the promo videos for the new album, and I am absolutely furious. Uh, I demand an apology. Tell me, where did that come from? Why did you have to come for me like that? Hey, I only put the top guys on there, if you notice. It was top guys only, Mount Rushmore only, so... If you ain't on that, then I don't even know who you are. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much it. It's like I mean, when Eminem dissed Fred Durst. Pretty much, I would say it's it's more like like Tom McDonald dissing <laughs> Fred Durst, maybe. <laughs> I don't know who's so. the Tom McDonald and who's the Fred Durst, but I, I don't know. I'm always McDonald, baby. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so I want to ask you about the new album, which I listened to over the past couple of days. And legitimately, I honestly think this is by far the best thing you guys have done. Um, in particular, what I like is that it's, it's kind of all over the place, like the heavy stuff. I think, you know, bands always say like, oh, this is the heaviest, but the most melodic, but it's kind of actually true with this one. Like the heaviest stuff you Thank have you. on there is the heaviest stuff you've done. There's the like industrial stuff and some just straight up rock songs, that are really catchy. And I probably wouldn't even think that all those songs were by the same band if they weren't on the same album, which is awesome and really hard to pull off. Um, tell me about the choice to make an album like that's kind of all over the place like that. You know, to me, I mean, I think it's obviously I was involved in creating it. So to me, a lot of the connective tissue kind of lies in seeds we've planted previously, as well as, you know, thematic ideas that we're kind of trying to string throughout the album, whether it's like melodies or things that are a little bit more soundscape based or like feel a little bit more cinematic or, you know, and just the idea of it all being under the sphere of like alternative music, you know? So for us, I think you can pretty much find like seeds of everything on the record in previous things that we've done. It's Definitely. just almost, they all kind of bloom here. And um, I appreciate you saying that about the heavy stuff. Cause I know I hear that a lot too. And it's almost like, it's hard to not let that phrase come out of your fucking yeah. mouth. Cause you're just like, but that is what it is. But uh, it, you Usually know, it, it means it's a butt rock album, you know, and there will definitely be people who can construe. I mean, one thing that nobody I've can say that about is, this album, nobody like the heavy shit. It sounds that. like old school, 18 visions. It's fucking nasty. Nobody can call I appreciate this butt that. Rock. I mean, to me, it's like, I feel like what we try to capture in the rock element are the things that I just personally find like missing in the current landscape of rock, which is like the connective tissue between all the kinds of music we're playing with here to me, which is like, for lack of a better word, like edge or a little bit of like attitude or a little bit of like pushing it. You know, mm -hmm. and I feel like for me, for me, and not like literally dissing anybody, but for me, what I see out there, especially in the rock space, I think there's a lot of great hard shit. I think there's a lot of great metal shit. In the like rock overall kind of space, I feel there's a lack of like punch. And I thought, okay, It sucks. Well, the shit is so you know, boring. I agree. I mean, I genuinely do agree. So, you know, I have, I, I've been trying to work on how to construe that in a way that's you know, we've tried to construe that in the past, but I think now we finally hope we made the record that can put our chips down in that way, as opposed to me running around bitching about this and that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think you did. And I mean, I feel like I'm kissing your ass here, but like the last half of the album is so good. Like those songs, which th Thank those you. songs I would say are the more like rock ones that sound kind of like, you know, nineties alternative rock. Those there, songs yeah. are so fucking catchy. Uh, it's like I had to like check and make sure they weren't covers or something. I was like, really? Like this shit is so good. And really quickly, I also wanted to mention my Patreon. If you like what I do on YouTube and everywhere else, joining my Patreon really helps me do this full time and worry less about videos getting demonetized by YouTube or copyright claimed by labels. Patrons get all my podcasts and main channel videos early. There are members only channels in my Discord that I'm super active in. I also do giveaways. For example, I've been giving away a lot of Emo's Not Dead merch. And you can also have me review your music, artwork, or anything else. All need to do is join my Patreon at the $10 level. And then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, just drop it in the comments of that post. And then I will review it live on Twitch. 
So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video, and I appreciate your support. Thank you, man. I mean, the way the way I wanted to build the structure, and it kind of even plays into like, and you'll see more of it, but like visually what you'll see, is it's almost like on one record, a band like forcefully evolving like and there's parts where we're almost being like pulled to this like hateful disgusting yeah. thing and, and like even on our album cover you know there's like this kind of parasitic worm attached to a bug you know and it's almost like this parasite and i'm almost using like heavy music and hard music to represent kind of like visually to me when creating that stuff it's like that's the darkness that's and for what people have seen of us so far we're talking right now before we've even put out our music video. Right. It's kind of like, that's what we wanted to show in the visuals. It's like this buggy parasitic thing that's pulling, but you know, without trying to, I guess, spoil the arc of the record. Like, like you said, by the time you get to the end, it's like, it's evolved into something totally different. And I thought that would be, once we started batting the songs around, it was like, wow, that could be actually a cool way to, to take it because at the end you know you know the end of records you normally you know for us it's like you go to hell at the end a lot of the time it's almost right, like right. you have to a double mat and it's like wow this opens up a whole new plane of things we can do what and right. you know we had a couple of those songs as outliers but like once we started putting them together i was like wow it kind of creates this upwards arc that we've never been able to pull off before you know well i like that because two things that are like kind of disappointing to me these days is that I feel like most bands, like the songs really all sound the same and that might be okay, but they don't really stand on their own. It's sort of like if you've heard one song by a band, you've heard them all and they might be a good song, but they all kind of sound the same. Um, and so I really appreciate when people can write songs that stand on their own and don't sound like each other and have their own identity and also like sequencing an album. And I'm not an album kind of guy. I like singles for the most part, but when okay. people can sequence an album in a way that like, okay, I understand why they had to be in this order. Like the Rollins band end of silence to me is like a great example of that. Like you couldn't change the order of those songs or it would fuck up the album. And I feel like you did that with this one, which is like so rare. I mean, one, thank you for real. Cause I haven't been able to really talk to that many people about the album yet, especially people who are like into similar spheres of music as myself. So that's awesome for me. But like, yeah, I feel like, that's so important to me. I'm such an album guy, but at the same time, and maybe this is where the whole like nineties or whatever thing kind of comes into play the most is like, for me, that's kind of the last period of these kind of complete albums that are on one hand pieces of art, but on the other hand are have accessibility and have right. individual right. songs you want to listen to. And somewhere along the line, not to say that there's not a million great records, but especially in rock, let's just talk about rock, yeah. you know, it became like either things are this super esoteric, like, you know, abstract piece of art that can be really cool. And I love shit like that. Or, you know, it's really just about like the single world or whatever. Right. So to me, three it's like, songs plus seven tracks of filler. And then it's sure. like, just and give me the three singles, save the filler. For sure. So it was like, okay, and we've been working on this album for years. I mean, we've been working on this album for like three and a half years straight. And you can hear so that. I appreciate that. It's old school in that regard, but the new school element was like, okay, but at the same time, I need to keep them guessing. But at the same time, it's got to be hooky. But at the yep. same time, it has to have sound design that's fresh. So it's like, how do we do all of that? That was kind of the goal. And I'm very pleased with how it was pulled off. I feel like it has both sides of it you know i feel like this is the album that you guys have been working towards making for the past 10 years that's fucking awesome man i hope so I hope like so. all these ideas like you said they've been there before but it feels like they really come together not that the old stuff wasn't good but it like really comes together like just like chef's kiss so it's gonna be hard to top this one which i guess is a good problem to have dude i mean to me the way i chart our albums also is like i'm trying to like we're trying to in our own way like conquer one thing so like on our i am king record it was like even the record before that that was like oh, under a little bit of a different thing when we went into i am king we were like okay we need to rebuild the foundation strip it down simple go bare boards and build something you know even inside 
the 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 artwork for it it says like no boxes no boundaries no fear it's like trying to implement these this idea that like right off the bat we're here this is the foundation and we're gonna build upwards from here so it was like that was almost like let's conquer like this hardcore thing for us right. and then forever was almost to me like metal and hardcore infusing a little bit of the alternative and the last record gets super metallic and and kind of goes a little bit almost technical and then this yeah. one it was like stepping into rock in a way and like building some of those things while still keeping hopefully all the things we love about hard music, heavy music and, but just doing it when on the record, when it's called for not yeah. doing it all the time. It's like when you get a little, not bored, but you've been lulled. Okay. Wake them up, you know, wake them up right, with either right. something really dynamically small, soft or something, right. you know, it's just, that's what I like. I'm looking for those ups and downs. I'm looking to be excited and, I'm looking to ride like a little bit of a roller coaster. So I do think like, especially at first glance for some people, it'll be like, this is way too all over the place. But I think especially hopefully when we're able to put the visual idea in front of people and able to connect dots for people, you know, there's a lot that's been, there's a lot of layers to the onion that I'm hoping can like bring things together for people and, and put it, it's more like a puzzle that, you know, forms together. Yeah. I, I'm just disappointed that people, by the time this comes out, I imagine people won't have heard the album, which sucks because you won't know what we're talking about, but trust me, you guys know, if you watch my videos, you know that I never talk about an album being great as an album. So trust me on this one. Like That's you awesome. listen to the whole thing. Fuck it's yeah. great. Listen to the man, listen to this shit. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's bring it. Well, you have a song in the album, which is a collab with Billy Corgan, which is not something I would have ever expected to see back in the code orange kids days, you know, working with Billy Corgan. Um, how did that happen? And what was that like? Well, you know, again, that's another thread that I feel like, like even our band adventures that lean more, um, you know, alternative for sure. And different. And, you know, you actually hear a lot of elements of that on this record in like a much more fully formed way mm -hmm. for people who haven't heard it. Like it, it, there's elements of that. But, you know, we were definitely influenced by the Pumpkins and that band, especially on our LP. Um, and some of the Code Rock stuff has definitely been, I mean, definitely been influenced by the Pumpkins. Um, I love especially the first many Pumpkins records, even even Messina and like I adore, of course. And of course, the classic Siamese Dream, yeah. remember. But so it was just kind of one of those things where it was a be crazy not to situation. It's like it was presented. We had a mutual person me and him started talking texting had a good connection got on the phone and i was just like dude like if you can't learn from somebody like that you're not a smart person yeah and he's a brilliant not, guy whether you like the band or not guy. he's brilliant and he's done amazing things and to me it's like every generation is pretty much really influenced by you know the 20 30 year mark before them right yeah. so to me like the legends of rock are those guys and there's not a lot of them left, you know, there's right. obviously a Trent Reznor and there's a Billy Corgan and there's, you know, but there's not a lot. And to be able to work with Billy, who's just like, to me, a living legend, truly, truly, sure. and is still doing amazing stuff of, of all different ilks. You know, we talk about, you know, me and him, I'm obviously been big involved with like wrestling stuff for my whole life. You know, he runs a, a right. revival of the NWA. So we connected on that level. Um, and it was just, again, it's like, if you can't fucking pick some shit up from him, you don't, when you work with people, you don't got to do exactly what they do. Right. You right. know, but he was able to implement so much knowledge. Just, we didn't, we weren't able, we didn't work that extensively being like honest, but yeah. we were able to talk, text, become friends, and then get in there for like a couple of days and just fuck around. I mean, that's and a while. That's a while for sure. And you know, he's, he, this shows how much a hard worker he is we went down to Nashville to meet him because he was doing a session with a country group that would end at like 10 p.m. We would get in there with him at 10 p.m. and work till like 2 a.m. and then yeah. come back every night. So he's a grinder. I'm a grinder. Yeah. We're very similar in many ways. So it was easy. It was amazing. So was it, you know, a lot of times with things like that, the song is done and it's like, okay, Billy, here's your, you know, 16 bars to do your thing. Was it like that? Or you came in, there was something no. halfway done or? We had the song, we had the bridge. There was an idea for the bridge. He started humming and doing his thing over the bridge. And I had some lyrics that I was kind of implementing. And then he did that part. And to me, it was so perfect because it almost has this level of like sarcasm to it. It's like, it's, it's like in on one side, you know, this whole, the spread your wings thing. is like a call to action for your soul. But on the other side, it's like, 
what I feel like almost being challenged by right. the outside world right. of, of like, do it then, you know, do right. it. Like, you, okay, you buddy, so spread much, your wings. Let's go. Exactly. So I loved that. And I was like, th- it just hit me in that moment. I was like, this is perfect. And then I was like, okay, well, how do we build around this to almost make this a moment where it's like the lights go dark and you get this like almost play as light on him in a, and put him in this almost like cinematic big moment. Cause to me, again, being a big wrestling guy, being a big movie guy, it's like, I want a Billy Corgan feature to be a star moment. Sure. It's like build the world around him. So it's like, he comes in and you're like, the show stops, not just have him sing a fucking part. Like he's not right. on the chorus or anything. It's a moment. It's almost like he plays a role, especially when you hear the album. I feel like it feels to me like he plays a role in the arc of the album. And, you know, so it was, I was, I'm still over the moon about it. And it's, it's awesome. Well, I obviously can't talk about working with him, but the the few times that I have been able to be around people who are like truly great at what they do and work with them in some way, you have that moment almost instantly where you're like, oh, that's why this person is a fucking legend. Oh, 100%. And 100%. And also something that was beautiful for us because it's been a very hard couple of years for us. There's been many ups and downs and we... You know, we had our album come the day COVID started, whatever, blah, 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 not bitching, oh, that's but right. it, you yeah. know, we put a lot of effort into that and pretty much the day it came out was the day that shit started. So we lost that. So it was, it's been like, it's been hard, but just that he, he was able to verbalize to us also what he felt was really special about what we were doing and about the different people in the band and what they bring to the table and how unique that was. And that was just such a morale boost because it was like, all right, we might not be running hot right now. You know, but he believes it and he sees it without me saying it. He didn't even know our other records. The only okay. stuff he had heard, he ne- he told me at the time he never listened to anything we did. He only heard all the de- the demos that I sent him. Oh, well, and that's, that's kind of cool, demos though. from this. And it's beautiful because he had no context for the band. And he was right. like, bro, he just told me he's like swing. He's like, you got you got something. You got to swing. And it just gave me the confidence to do what we did on this record, which is swing you know so. you gotta swing but you also have to put in the work to make it great which is like what you guys clearly did you know you can't just take Thank a wild you. risk and kind of half-ass it and then be mad when people don't like it one thing about me man no matter what anyone could ever say about me in life there's nothing when it comes to this band that i half-ass ever i mean even today we're dealing with Every email blast, every picture, every mock up, every everything is pined over. Because to me, it's like I don't know what will happen with this record. This record could come out, everybody could not like it. It could whatever, and that could be that. But if at least the art's on the wall, the way that I want it to be, and the way my whole group wants it to be, at least I have that. I can look myself in the mirror when this is all over. If we our successes or failures in the public eye or whatever and go, okay, every piece of this I tried. And I've been working for fucking 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, eight hours a day, every day on this thing for three and a half years for nothing. You know, so at the very least, man, however we, it goes down, I know I'm, I'm proud of that. And I believe in that. And I'll never have to ask anything when it comes to this shit. And that's why it's like, it has to be done all or nothing because I put so much of my heart into it and my soul into it that I just feel like it deserves that it deserves the best effort from everybody involved, whether it's, you know, successful or not. Sometimes I wonder when I hear songs come out from a lot of, especially kind of metal core bands, I would say, I wonder, did they ever have that conversation with themselves of like, is this really the best we can do? Like everybody involved with this, put this out. And you guys thought like, this is the absolute best. If it is cool, like that's like, then great. But I just don't think that many people really challenge themselves to look at every single little detail of this and go, did we push ourselves to the absolute limit? I mean, I know them, so I know they don't, you know what (laughs) I mean? (laughs) But I'll say again, and I want to say this without this being like, I don't want this to be like this thing that i mean you can't control it but like i i i want to give context to this but i do personally feel like a lot of the stuff i see out there feels even a lot of 
a lot of the most popular stuff right now that's kind yes. of permeating our genre, which is why sometimes I feel a bit hopeless because it's like, it's to me, it's so plastic. Right. Know? Like you, what so is, what is special about this? What are you trying to say? There's fucking, you have nothing to say. That's how I feel. And to me, it was like, all right, when I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm feeling frustrated about that and I'm seeing, I'm like, okay, well put it on wax yeah like how you gotta make a record that can that shows what you're trying to say and stop yes. like oh this is me to myself is like stop saying it do it so yeah. that has been what we've been trying to do because I, I feel like with this thing you know with this record that we made it's gonna work i hope in two capacities for people who like the band one, I hope it can just wash over you and you can enjoy it and it has cool melodies and choruses and heavy parts and hard, exciting stuff. But there's a lot, a lot of layers of the onion. There's a lot of things you can discover in the artwork, in the lyrics, in the connectivity to our previous releases, in the thematic ideas, in what it's trying to present, in the live setting. So I'm just, you know, that's the kind of shit that I want to give to people because that's the shit that I miss that I don't really see too much of anymore. Yeah. And that's why, like, when I get on these shows and they're like, what, what, what bands do you like? Do you like this band? That band? And it just makes me feel like and seem like such a fucking hater. Which yeah, because you're like, hater, no, I no, 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 no. And I don't want to be that way, but. I don't want to be that way either, man. I don't want to be that. I try so fucking hard and, you know, but in the rock world, I feel it's okay in terms of things that are popular. You'll never see me saying shit about stuff from the hardcore world yeah, because yeah, yeah. I love that stuff for yeah. what it is and there's so much good there's so many amazing versions especially right now it's amazing yeah but it is in something that's a bit more grand to me there's nothing yeah like genuinely to me there's actually nothing like so, I listen again, to like the rock this pl playlist on Spotify and I'm like really this is the best we can come up like really that's how dude I, I feel you as well and but at the same and time, I hate being that guy. I really do. I hate oh it. No, me too. It's man, I'm so fucking crazy that like I can get so down because of that. Because I'm just like, we try to present a lot of pieces of a lot of different works, and um, at times, a lot of the times, it's just not even seen. It's less so even about it being like you know, it's such in a bubble. Like, yeah. and you know, my hope for this record and this may or may not happen. Who knows? It just depends on how things line up in time, but that it can at least be seen a little outside of that bubble, just so I can find out what maybe outside of that bubble would think. Cause when I look around at the world and I see like the shirts people wear now, and I see what like hip hop takes from, and I'm like, this to me is the record for all that. Yeah. It has all of that. So it's like, but I don't know. Again, I made it. So right. who knows? I mean, but that's, I feel like it's, meaning you know, like you want it, like it, a Playboy it, Cardi fan or something to hear this. Is that what you mean? I mean, I feel like it could be for them the same way it could be for somebody going to the big fucking new metal gimmick fest, or it could be yeah. for somebody who's <laughs> also <Gimmick> into <laughs> like electronic shit or what. Yeah. Like it casts all of that. Yeah, and and they wear it on the tees. Right. But do they want? The, the next do they want the next version you know so again and maybe and very well that's all in the eye of the beholder and to many people we're not that but to me especially like see us live see what we put on wax see what we do on the art we do it all we are it yeah we are it so to me it's sometimes frustrating because i feel a little bit trapped in this bubble but that's not to say i'm not honestly extremely great like i've been through every stage of this i've worked this from the literal groundest of ground floors and gone up inch by inch by inch in different ways. And, and, and so I appreciate everything. I appreciate I mean, for anybody everything. who doesn't know code orange has been a band in one shape or another for what, 15 years now. Yeah. Since I was about 14 years old, you know? Yeah. So since I was 14 and then really when I was 17, 18 and we got on the road, we were calling and booking our own living room shows and house shows and DFW shows. I mean, we've done, tour and tour and tour and tour of the u.s we've done we were just joking because we were in europe we've done tours in the same van with full of hell in the same van bane in the same van switching tongues in the same van meaning every seat is taken in that whole van right, for right. three weeks 
you draw playing cards to to see where you sit on an overnight 12 hour drive so i i'm so genuinely appreciative of every inch that Colin we young get. beat you for shotgun uh, I mean, you know, he's getting up there, that motherfucker. He's always getting up there. No, actually, Taylor Young is the shotgun guy. Okay. That wasn't even a discussion. He was up there. <laughs> but respect, he's he's the older brother, and he's been right, – right. he, he was grinding this game long before us. But so, yeah, I just say that to say, like, sometimes I do – and this I've expressed this in interviews and stuff, and I feel like I definitely maybe expressed the wrong way. But sometimes I do feel frustration because I feel like you feel almost like people are out there and they're, like, looking for this thing. And you're like, I got the thing, yeah. but you're yeah. in this crowd. And it's like, you know, you're like, I got it, and nobody hears you. So sometimes it's like, it's frustrating. You just got to be loud enough and good enough to make them notice you, you know? Hey, we try, we're trying, man. We get out there. We're going to do our best. So Yeah. Well, speaking of hardcore, um, for anybody who doesn't know, like your roots are very much in the hardcore scene. I mean, you're wearing an Earth Crisis shirt and you guys started out on Death Wish. And like you said, did tours with all those bands, blah, blah, blah. Um, even though maybe people see the band as like maybe part of metal now, like you guys are absolutely from the hardcore scene. How do you see yourselves in relation to hardcore these days? I mean, to me, it's not even like we're from the hardcore scene. It's like culturally we are hardcore, right? Right. right. Hardcore is different. And I, you know, in to other kinds of music in the way that to me, at least it's like something you were there or you weren't, it's you not are a sound. there or you aren't. It's yeah. not really a sound. It's to me, and this has changed, but to me, it's dues paid. To me, it's roads traveled. Yeah. To me, it's being a part of that culture. Yeah. And so people will try to say to us. Like at Fall Out like, Boy is part of hardcore, you know, because they were there. I was just with that dude at the um, Sincerity Fest in Pittsburgh. You know, the he was playing, I think, with Race Trader. Um, Andy? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like in the last, last summer. But yeah, like to me... We're to me, my car can never be pulled. Right. Right. I, I'm part of it. And right. anybody who's part of it for real, that's been a part of it. They know that. So it does, when you've done that and you put that in it, to me, it frees my soul to be able to do whatever it is we want to do, because I know that we, you know, that hardcore thing is just who we are. It's like my blood. It's inside of me. Yeah. And a lot of the people who try to tell me it's not, it's like, I look at them. Well, who and the I fuck go, are you? I'm like, but you're not, you know what <laughs> right. I mean? So what, what, what is it? Like, it, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I'll always be a part of it. And I'll always, it, it's especially here. I mean, here in Pittsburgh, everybody knows we're part, you know, we're part of it, but you know, the more hardcore and stuff has become internet. Yeah. It, right. it becomes, you know, it's, there's so many echo chambers and so many bubbles and so many of your this is and your that and your that. And you know, a lot of the bands that are out there flying that flag, like I didn't see them pay them dues or do that shit. So, you know, it's confusing to me. All that dude, the world has become so confusing to me at times. I'm just like, I don't feel like I fit into it and I don't know how to fit into it. And I don't know how to be a part of it, you know? Yeah, but you know, I mean, that's uh, you know, getting older, I guess. Um, for sure, for that is that. I mean, I've always felt a sense of that, but that is it. But I still think the bands are great and the kids are great. And I talk to the talk to everybody, and a lot of the bands that are young bands are my age or older. Right. So right, I'm like, right. I've been doing this shit my whole life. So I mean, and there are some now, especially because of the new shit. Really young kids starting to get into it. Yeah. I haven't really seen their bands pop up as much. A lot of the bands that are popping up are still in that range of age that we're in, you know, so we can still relate to everybody. And there's not been one tour we've ever done where we didn't have a hardcore band with us, you know? So it's always part of us. And I, it means a lot to me. I forget what you even asked. I just started ranting. So I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just asking about sort of, yeah. I was asking how you see yourself in relation to hardcore, which, you know, you totally answered that, you know, and like you said, for whatever my opinion is worth, like I don't go to local shows anymore because I have two jobs and a baby and I just can't. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I pay attention to things and from what I see, like, I feel like hardcore now is in a better place than it's been for a really long time. You know, like there's bands like drain and Gridiron and ingrown that are all like awesome. As good as anything I've ever heard in my life, you know, speed is doing cool things. I think I, it's I agree, super man. cool. Dude, I see. agree. Gridiron are my buddies for, um, like years and years. Well, that's and a right. Lot They're of from Pennsylvania, were, aren't they? Yeah. A lot of them I were just them. like, 
the dudes in that were just like around when some of them were in other bands like Matt Carl, the singer, he was just like always in the scene for years and years. So it's great to see him get band. I actually love their music. I think they're, yeah, they're great. Drain, the kid from Drain, um, Sammy, the dude, not the kid, not no yeah. disrespect to him at all. He sent me a message that was really kind out of the blue. That was pretty much like you guys, you guys innovate this shit or lead this shit. And so I just right away got his number. We got on the phone for like an hour, chopped it up. We're very similar. We have a lot of connection and he was a great guy. Like, and he, and me and him, we think in a lot of the same way. So, you know, obviously we've helped like bolster up and are, you know, vain and have them. They're amazing band. I think they're unbelievably talented band. They're so awesome. You know, so we're, there's bands from here, <clears throat> lots of band, awesome tour stuff here. So we're still connected to it all. Not every band that comes out, a lot of the bands that come out, it ain't, it ain't for me. But if you've heard my music, you should know it isn't for me. It doesn't because have to be not, for you. And, and we never really fit, we never really fit right in anywhere yeah. anyway, like from the get go, right off the bat. We maybe had six months of fitting right in and being <laughs> lifted up and that was it. And then it was over. So, but I feel like, you know, I feel like, uh, the scene is so, is doing really, really well. But one thing that's funny is like somebody asked me recently, they're like, do you think hardcore being so popular now is going to help, you know, bolster your guys ship? And I'm like, I really don't think so because in the time where hardcore is most popular, we decided to make a record Not that has hardcore. a hardcore element. Yeah. It has, you know, it has those parts yeah. and a lot of songs and a lot of hard shit. And, and, but we didn't, we didn't play into it. We go left, we go right. Yeah, go yeah, left. Yeah. It's just how, it ends up for us, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't think the success of the hardcore scene really has a lot of effect on what Code Orange, you know, does at this point in time. No, nah, but I love it, and we'll ha- I always want to play with the bands, and I want, like when we do a tour, you'll see the bands. You know, if they want to do it, if they're still into it, we'll be together because yeah. we're. And if we're the more we're able to get, hopefully, you know, more popular or whatever, I'll all we'll always bolster it up. I mean, I feel it's my duty. I uh, not only just like, it's my culture. Yeah. It is my culture. You know, so. I feel the same way. And like, you'll never, you know, right or wrong. You will never hear me say anything bad about a hardcore band. Cause I just, cause it's like, it's my culture. Those are my friends. I even agree, if, dude. Even if I don't I'm, know them, they're my friends and I'm never going to say anything bad about them. I agree. I'm the same. I mean, we're the same on the same page to me. It's like, I'm a soldier. I'm yeah, a soldier exactly. in the hardcore war. <laughs> so I'm just like, I will not say shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> Like to me, you'll never see me. Yeah, like I, I have nothing but respect for it. Yeah, there's, there's so many good bands too. Like it was a while ago, but I saw Regulate live. You gotta see Regulate live, bro. They, they're live. They're unbelievable. Like I saw it, and I was like, this is one of the greatest live bands of all time. I, I mean, still I think hardcore like, oh, is the best genre of music for live shows. There's nothing like it. And there's still some bands like that live who, who cut above it or never ending game just put out a great record. Like that's a record that I really like, you know, like, so some, a lot of it doesn't exactly fit into my style because there's like, if it's super punky again, yeah. I like that shit, but it ain't really my thing. If it's super metal core to the point of it being like, and I use this term, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but like to me, like wolf tour style. Yeah. 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 I don't know about any of that. So I yeah. don't like that either. So like it has to hit this medium space right. being like hard and like groovy <laughs> and like it's just like where we come from our area yeah. and yeah 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 I, I'm I'm with you I got you I get, I know what you mean what you mean yeah. um well speaking of hardcore um one of the things I really like about this album you know hardcore not necessarily known for great vocals let's put it that way <laughs> um and you you were a drummer first but I was really yeah. blown away by how great the vocals and vocal arrangements are on this album, because I feel like Thank these you. days, so many bands really are just focused on riffs and like vocals are almost like an afterthought. Um, how do you think about that? You know, especially coming from being a drummer and now being a front man and, you know, how do you think about vocals? This one, we approached it differently for sure. Like we kind of started off writing the songs in a similar way to how we always do, which is like, the vocals are in my head while we're doing the music, but I'm not communicating it to everyone until right. we get later. But this time it was like, no, like put everything out there. Let's all communicate with one another and try stuff and make sure it's built around that. Some songs are done differently. Like, like 
some songs that are a little bit of a crazier journey are, can be led by both a little more, but especially the songs where we wanted to stick the hooks and stuff. We made that yeah. the most important thing and like engineered a little bit more backwards, which is like definitely a little bit more of like a pop sensibility or yeah. something, not like the way, but I think we did it in like a way Every, we tried to keep the balance, but the vocals were definitely way more. And I was just trying to get better. And I know Reba was trying to get better. She sounds so good on this. And yeah. I was trying to get, just learn and just get better and just be like, hey, like listen to my songs. are like, that sucks. That's not good. Work harder. Get better. Sound better. Treat it. Be a pro. But then, but the thing me and Reba really wanted to do on all the takes that in the past gets washed out by like, computer perfectionism and yeah. technical perfectionism is we wanted it to have emotion. We're like, it has to have yes. emotion and feel like you got to feel it. Cause live, we were good at communicating that, but on our records, I would listen to it and I'm like, why is this the like watered down ass version of this great song we play live? So like we try, we redid it over and over to try to capture that emotion. And that was the emotion was like the most important thing, rawness emotion while still hopefully being on pitch. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's two different things, right? Like playing in a studio with someone scrutinizing everything you're doing versus playing to, you know, hundreds or thousands of kids going ape shit who don't care if you like are a little bit pitchy. You know, there's two different things. Yeah. And like, again, I, we were pulling from, I'm trying to pull from modern and old school. So it's like the modern stuff we're pulling from is utilizing the technology, utilizing soundscape, utilizing effects and doing things in a cool like you know learning from hip-hop and learning from things but old school it's like and hip-hop does this great actually but rock sucks at it which is like how those records were bring the emotion back bring the rawness back bring the spontaneity the, the spontaneity yeah. calculated spontaneity at times but spontaneity yeah. nonetheless and we were we were learning during this process how to do that and and you know by producing it ourselves we were able to get it exactly how we wanted to get it, you know? So we were able to keep workshopping it until it was right where we wanted it to be, you know? Do you know who Babytron is? I heard the name, but I don't know what, what it is. He's like kind of a like hype, like Detroit rapper, like young kid. And, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, I have heard of it. Yeah, he has I've like a really kind of unique kind of flow. And um, I was watching this like vlog with him and he records like two or three songs a day for one. And they're like, how long does it take you to, to do a song? He's like, usually like 20 minutes. If I'm really stuck, 45 minutes. I'm like, Damn. oh, yeah. I mean, that, a lot <laughs> of the hip hop guys do that. And the problem with my brain is like, I am like a perfectionist to the point where I can't do that. So some of it, I have to like manufacture that. But Reba's really good at that. And Reba's really good at reminding me to do that and to yeah. let things fly. And so it's like we're working together to keep the spontaneity while also keeping because we are playing with so many genres and ideas that it can become just a mess. And so you like, can't do we, a code orange yeah. song in 45 minutes. You just can't, you might be able to get like the core you can't do a idea code orange song in 45 days. Lately. Yeah. But you, I mean, yeah, there's just more, that. there's legitimately more going on than a baby Tron song. And that's not to put him down or anything. It's just the, the nature of the music and the production is, is two different things, but the spontaneity, I think there's something there. There's really something there and you can even hear it on like, and lots of, I mean, even just using one of the biggest artists as an example, like the Kanye records, a lot of the times, and he used to do it, I think a little more artfully, but he would, there's things in there that are uncompleted, you know, right, right. I think now, I think again, I, I'm, you know, I think in some of the later stuff that's kind of used to me a little bit can be a little crutchy at times, yeah. but especially on some of the records it's used in such an amazing way. And it's like, dude, you heard that it's the same shit you heard in like grunge and shit. Yeah. It's like you hear using yeahs and using woes and use, and you right. know, that sometimes can become a parody of itself when, when it's done amazingly, when it's done like Alice and Chains do it or Nirvana do it or whatever. It's so fucking cool. And it's like, we were trying to crack that code a little bit on this one. I don't think we, you know, we're, there's, there's still much to learn for us, but I felt we got a little bit of that in there more than we've ever been able to get it. So there's a little bit more of that and a little bit more almost what in hip hop is ad libs. Yeah. You know? Right. 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 Um, one part of this I thought was really interesting is you worked with Steve Albini, which as far as I know, he doesn't really do a lot of 
metal um and uh and and doesn't work with a lot of like i guess you guys are like a younger band by by his standards what was it like working with him Dude, it was amazing. Yeah, well, I was kind of looking into it, and I think the closest thing he's done, which isn't close at all, but maybe on the surface, it's like doom metal type right, shit. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I think he did Neurosis, which is pretty awesome. You definitely that, did yeah. some Neurosis. Um, it was unbelievably awesome. It was like the perfect thing for this record. It's like, how do we get somebody who can capture this in like a way that we can't quite see, but is still pretty much just going to let us do exactly what we want to do, how we want to do it. And so like we were the organizers, we were the producers. We told him we're doing the X, Y, Z in a row this way. And he just made it sound great and helped us get the best version of that. And he was so overjoyed because he felt like, or it seemed like he was just ask him, but he <laughs> felt seemed so happy because we were so prepared. So it was like, the meeting of the perfect groups, like he doesn't want to, even to like a bit of a neurotic point, he's playing operation. He doesn't want to buzz. He doesn't want to do anything that steps over the line of being a technician. Right. Nothing creative. Right. He's just, he's, he's just but, here to capture what you do. Right. That's my understanding of how he works. It is. But at the same time, he is creative with sound and he's okay. almost has this veil up. I noticed of like, not like he wants to, he wants to do it in a certain way. But it was like a beautiful thing, man. Like, again, as I get older, it's like, it's crazy not to learn under the learning tree of somebody like that while sure. I'm this amazing life opportunity. And to me, it's like, I'm looking at this big stew. And it's like, let's throw Billy Corgan's genius in. Let's throw Steve Albini's genius in. As long as it's somebody that's not detrimental to the process, which we've run into those two. Yeah. And it's somebody that's willing to, to play the role they need to play. I mean, dude, it was a dream. It was great. And then we had a great couple of weeks down there and just working with them guys and just being in a fresh environment. And, you know, one thing I noticed was like we worked with Kurt Ballou very early. And yeah. I've noticed how much Kurt Ballou, it seems like, has modeled himself off of Steve Albini. Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. So when I was with Steve Albini, I was like, dude, you remind me of my boy Kurt Ballou. Like, <laughs> and, I'm just, and I'm just like, wait a minute. I got things all fucking mixed up. But Kurt Ballou's similar in that way. I almost feel like if we worked with him again, we'd be able to have a similar process. But the point we worked with him, we weren't mature enough yet to be prepared enough and to have a process ready to go. And to, I mean, and you to guys know were like what 19 we or 20 do. then, right? Yeah. 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 And like 17 kids. and 18 and yeah, all them, yeah. all those, the baby ones, you know? Well, it's interesting. You know, you mentioned bringing in these people like Steve and Billy and um, it's like when you see a band like Code Orange, who's sort of like at this level and like, it's always a warning sign to me. We're like, oh, we brought in this big name rock producer from the generation before us. I'm always like, oh God, this is going to be terrible. Because those people, I feel you. You know, it's you. like they don't get it. They don't understand the genre, and it's like it always ends up bad. Um, and uh, and it didn't. It it worked out great in this case. What do you think is the key to bringing in people? You know, who don't necessarily. You know, I mean, they're not. I don't want to say they don't get your genre, but you know what I mean. How do you navigate that? Of bringing in those sort of like older brains without it sounding weird and bad. I think the way you navigate it, I've learned, and it took me a long time to learn this, and I think we learned it on this one, for me personally. For me personally, I think I tried to fight against it, but I think we have to have the control. Yeah. We have to have the technical skills, which now we do. You know, Shade is really, really proficient with Pro Tools. Reeve is proficient with Pro Tools. Yeah. We are pretty proficient in all things technological at this point. There's much we've learned and are learning about, especially we weren't proficient in recording live drums and, and things like that. Hence why we went this route. Yeah. But in putting it together, we put it all together now. So what we do is we go, you know, we show you your, we show them the part they need to see or the part they want to see. Mm -hmm. We don't take all the ingredients to go, here you go. Like we did before. How do we, let's figure this out together. It's like, you don't got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is do X, Y, Z. And then if there's anything else you want it, we're totally down for that. Like open for that. But I'm not putting what I've done in the past is I put this big fucking backpack on other people's back. 
Right, right, right. And now it's like with my guys, one, it's my, my guys are so talented. It's almost like I'm so grateful to, to have them because I'm not technically pro- proficient in that regard. I'm really not. But I do have a brain and a that can keep these things together and, and organize these things and chart them out and, and think of the whole picture. And, and then everyone gets in on their small picture. And then it's my job and on this record, Shade's job, it was R2's job to take everyone's picture and put it all together because we're the only ones that can do that. And instead of trying to get other people to do it and trying to, and being so frustrated, like it ain't their fault that they can't fucking do it. It's like, they don't know what I want to do. And and other bands have a totally different experience. Like the producer makes, makes what they do because they're willing to let go. I just realized I'm not willing to let go. I can't let go. It never works out. Like if it's like, let's say you go to the guy who produced, I don't know, just to pull it out of my ass, um, Stone Temple Pilots, who I don't even know who that is. And you're like, make us like Stone Temple Pilots and, and they'll do it. But that's bad because you're not Stone Temple Pilots and they can't make you that. And it's not the producer's fault. It's your fault for thinking that you can go to somebody and they'll sprinkle their magic pixie dust on you and make you into something you're not. It's all, it's like life is happenstance, I've noticed. Because you'll see, like, if you, because I'm, I'm an addict to this shit, so I'll look up, like, how did, how is Pantera's process working with Terry Date or whatever? Yeah. I'm trying to learn. And their shit seems very natural, very, like, we just play, they're just very good technically, and he made yeah. the sound. It never was really like that for us. For us, it had to be more finely tuned, probably because we were trying to put a lot of things together that shouldn't fit necessarily. Right. So everyone's process is different. I mean, we've had amazing collaborators Like we've worked with Will Yip, who Mm -hmm. he is really amazing at being in the grind with you. He'll work a million hours. He'll try to get there with you every inch. He won't get annoyed. That's why we can work with him because other people we worked with, even Kurt at times, he's a fucking genius. Would And a lot of this is definitely on my end of just needing to mature, but he would just be like, dude, I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm done. Enough of this shit. Yeah. And like, not on a personal level, like we yeah. were cool there, but like, or like the more thing we had with the produ- with, with, with Nick who worked on our underneath record, who was awesome, but it was like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That, you know what I mean? He, right. And Nick would say, this is what Nick would say. This shit rocks. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't want to fuck it up. So just do your shit. You know? <laughs> so it's like, we learned from all these processes and I think we landed on this one in the right place, which is like, we got to put in the million hours and do it our way. And have people come in when it's time for them to come in yeah. and put them in the right spot to succeed and so take like if you, the magic from them that they can give. You know? If you bring in, I'll say Billy Corgan, but whoever it is, it's like, here's our vision for this thing. We did this, this, and this. Here's what we want from you in this part. Can you, can you do that? And they're like, it's yeah, that in that. a way. It's that in a way, but it's also in a way of openness, which almost feels yeah. opposite. It's almost like, Give me what you got and I'll take it into my corner for the next 5 million hours. We'll put it all together. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, cause I don't want to put them in the corner. And I learned a lot of that from Reba as well, because mm-hmm. Reba can get frustrated with, she doesn't like to see the whole picture per se. Okay. She wants to focus on the song, on the thing, on that part, on the, she doesn't want to be in my world. At times. She, she wants to be like, how do I make out. this spooky, weird sound on this one part of the bridge to make it sound like a fucking horror yeah, movie? For sure. Or or even in bigger scope for certain songs, I want to make this a great song, but I don't want to worry about how that song fits in with the right, rest right, of the album right. at all. Got it, she doesn't yeah. want to worry about that at all. So then it's my thing to be like, I've just had to learn how to mature and I'm still working on it, but of how to like get what I want to get out of it. And also, but what with getting what I want to get out of it, also getting the magic everyone else has. to. I mean, that's being a producer. They have, but they have so much great shit to offer that I can never do. And, and Steve does obviously. And Reba does. And Billy does. And Shade does. And Joe and Dom do. And Max Portnoy, our drummer does. And how do I let my vision come to life? You know, I got my fucking, I got my fucking three 
notebooks about the re- the record and all my my shit come to life, but then also not lose their magic along the way. And sometimes it made my head feel like it was going to explode and I was going to fucking kill myself. But you know, that was my goal. Tell me about working with Max because obviously you know he's an incredible drummer. You used to be the drummer. How do you sort of think about drums now? Because I feel like this album is very like drum forward in a cool way. Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. He's so talented, man. And like what I'm trying to do with him is I'm just trying to give him whatever I have in terms of, I feel like my good qualities as a drummer are, I have good groove. I have good push and pull. I can smack the things. I have good feeling. I don't have a lot of good technical skill. I don't have a lot of good chops. I don't have a lot of those things. So it's like, I'm trying to implant my groove and feel and push right. it on him because he has everything else. Yeah, he's ridiculous. He's, he's ridiculous. But for our music, we need some of my spirit in there too. So it's almost like I'm trying to transport into his <laughs> vessel while right. still keeping everything cool that he does. So like you'll hear on the record, the record was played probably 60% him, 40% me. Okay. You know? And so everything he wanted to do, he got to do anything. He thought like I can nail this. He did. And anything I thought it would just be easier for me to do. Cause maybe it's a group thing or a, mostly like a rock thing or a group thing or right. a more hard, hardcore thing. Yeah. Like our song theater of cruelty. It really drops. It's like, dun, 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 it, dun, it's dun, weird dun, how like these like really you know? good technical drummers sometimes struggle with playing the simplest, like hardcore shit. Yeah, and I wouldn't say he struggles, but I would say that. Well, you know he what I mean. Has, like it just doesn't sound. He, he he's a good stat points up there, and he wants to. That's what's amazing about him. He is the greatest attitude, greatest kid. And now watch this come back to kill me in like a couple years. But <laughs> honestly, like his attitude and mentality is so good. He just wants to learn and he wants to be great. And also, he has so much to show me and teach me. So it's like I found the perfect. I feel like, and then hopefully, you know, it stays this way, but I just feel like I found the perfect guy. And I'm just so, like, I'm so proud of him. I also learned so much from him. And you hear all these fills on this record that I could never do. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, shit's wild. But he, but he throws them into rock. Like, a cool twist to us, a good example is the song called The Mask of Sanity Slips. And it's like, there's these opening kind of Nirvana hits, but he throws it. Yeah. And you don't hear that in Nirvana. So it's right. like, how do we take stuff and twist it? Right. And he added that element into it. Well, I think know? that being able to collaborate in such an ego free way of like, hey, wh- whoever's going to sound better playing this part is who's going to play it. And it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's not my drums or your drums. Like, that's such a rare thing. Like, for a, a lot of people don't know this, but most of the time for most bands, one person will play all the guitars and bass in the studio. And um, sometimes people. Yeah. That can be contentious because it might not be the person who wrote the song or, you know, but at the end of the day, it should be about like what sounds best. I agree. And we certainly have our moments of contention, all of us, not with Max, to be honest. I mean, he's fresh, so he has no contention. And also he's just like, if anybody knows me, he's just the sweetest kid. But like we, the rest of us, we have those moments. We butt heads. We say, I want to do this and I want to be on this part, but I don't let, I really try to not let the end result be dictated by that. That's like my goal. It's like, let's work through it and figure it out. And everyone plays on this record. And Reba does a ton. Reba does a lot of the extra stuff because she's so talented. But everyone plays on this record a lot. Joe's playing all the bass. Dom's playing all the fucking, I mean, all the little things he does. Like Dom can hit the pinches in a way that none of us can. That's like really unique. And a lot of the pinchy stuff you hear on him, that's his shit. Like, there was a song called The Game People Have Heard, and he came up with that kind of pinch melody that to me, I was like, I've never even heard something exactly like that. I've heard cousins of it, but that's a new thing. Like, utilize that. So, you know, we have our ego stuff for sure, yeah. but like for the most part, I feel like because we're aware of it and we talk about it, I hope that we can subvert that and, and it's, make the it's, best thing. It's just sad when you see ego get in the way. Like, I won't say who it is, but there was... Uh, a, a relatively popular band that came out with a new album a couple years ago that sounded like just bad and weird. And like their old stuff was so much better. And my friend recorded it. And I was like, what, why does this sound this way? And he just replied, he's like, uh, someone so insisted on playing all his own parts, which he never played on the albums before. And I was like, 
Ah, well, that'll do it. <laughs> well, there's there's two ways to look at it. There's best person does stuff. But then, you know, the thing we've believed in over time is there's got to be some of that and there's got to be getting the other people to get better and to right. pull them up, pull your brothers up and yeah. work on them. So like, dude, Dom put in hundred hours with Max, just them two in the room, working on grooves by themselves. He workshopped it with them, you know, for our tours, for all of our shit, pull each other up and get each other better and get each other to a point where we can do this stuff. And that's, that's our idyllic mentality that we try to live by, you know, 70% of the time. And then, you know, the rest is like, yeah, bullshit happens and whatever. But I think that is the goal is to like, best things should be there. But at the same time, pull your brothers up, yeah. work with them, teach them, show them. Because everybody in my band, you know, maybe the people, including myself, who aren't like, weren't, didn't come out of the womb with musical talent. You know, like Reba's probably really musically talented. Shade's really technically talented. The rest of us, we have to learn, you know what I mean? So like them, them guys, Dom and Joe, they've worked hard. Dom worked so hard that his finger has now like exploded like a tendon in his finger. The doctor told him is never going to be the same again. His finger looks like a bit like mine. My knuckles are fucked from jujitsu. So like imagine mine. mine, mine, I've broken pinkies and shit. Yeah. Mine are bad, but like mine, his is this big and it's never going to change. And that's just for this record because he wouldn't stop and he wouldn't tell anybody, which is kind of fucked up, but you get my point. Everybody, you just got to one or the other, pull your boys up. Or yeah, best man goes. That's it. Cool. Well, uh, sounds good. I will let you go. Um, but I'm really excited for this album. I want everyone to hear it and, uh, I'm excited to see what people think. I can't wait. I will see what they think. I appreciate it. Thanks for the kind words about it. It makes me excited. So cool. I'll talk to you later. Take care. All right.